Welcome back everybody. And this question, we're given a graph of f of x. So this is f of x over here. And we have to draw the inverse of f of x and state the domain and range of the inverse. So I drew a Cartesian plane here. I'm going to draw the inverse on that graph. Question is, how do we do that? Well, if you're given a graph like this, what I always recommend is getting the coordinates of all of the corners. So this corner, this corner, this corner, and this corner. So this corner here has a coordinate of negative 4 and 3. This here has a coordinate of 0 and 3. And then this here has a coordinate of 2 and negative 1. And then over here, this is 4 and 1. So what you can do is you could take these coordinates, you could put them in a table. So the table for f of x is going to be what? It's going to be negative 4 and 3, 0 and 3, 2, negative 1, 4 and 1. So this is the table for f of x. I took all the coordinates, put them in a table. And now we can get the table for the inverse. All we do is we pretty much take these coordinates and just flip them. So this negative 4 and 3 would turn into 3 and negative 4. This would be 3 and 0. This would be uh, negative 1 and 2. This would be 1 and 4. So now we could plot these. So 3 and negative 4, that is down here. Then we got 3 and 0, which is up there. Then we got negative 1 and 2, which is here. And then we got 1 and 4, which is... Um, up there. So now that we have the coordinates plotted, what you want to do is you want to co uh, connect the coordinates, but you want to connect them in this order. So 3, negative 4 to 3 and 0, that would be here. And then 3 and 0 to negative 1 and 2, that would be over here. And then negative 1 and 2 to 1 and 4, that would be over there. Okay, so you want to make sure you do it in this order because it's really easy to maybe connect here to here and then we could have maybe connected to this dot and then that dot. But you want to go in that same order because remember, this is the inverse of this function. Right, so it's just basically, if we take this function and we were to reflect it on the y equals x line, we would end up with this relation over here. So this is the inverse. And notice that it's not a function because it fails the vertical line test at multiple points here and then also in this area there. Okay, so we also have to stay with the domain and ranges for the inverse. What's the domain and range going to be? Well, domain, x can be anything. But x has to be between negative 1 and positive 3. Right? All the x values are between negative 1 and positive 3. And then the range, y can be anything. But y has to be in between negative 4 and uh, 1, 2, 3, 4. And positive 4. Right? All of the y values are between negative 4 and positive 4. So that's the domain and range for the inverse. And just to show you, if we were to take the domain and range of the original function, what's the domain going to be for the original function? What's x have to be in between? Negative 4 and positive 4. And then the range, y can be anything, but the y values have to be between negative 1 and positive 3. So notice how the domain and range is just switched up for the inverse, right? So the domain for the function is between negative 4 and 4, while the range of the inverse is between negative 4 and 4. 
the range of the functions between negative 1 and 3, domain of the inverse is between negative 1 and 3. Right? So it's always going to have that sort of relationship. Everything's just going to be inverse. And that makes sense because the inverse is just all the coordinates inversed. And then you plot it. Remember, it's got to be in this order. And uh, yeah, that's it. That's the sketch of the inverse. That's the domain and range for it.